you know, you see a young guy right now pop a hundred thousand dollar a month on some Shopify, like, dude, I don't know. I don't know if the market's going to flush those dudes out or not. Like, it's just going to be really interesting to watch, you know, for guys yeah, like I mean, that. But I know that guys like us who have real businesses, like we'll make it. Yeah. I mean, the, the guys that, to the guys that are doing that and are killing on Shopify, which I have a lot of friends that are doing ridiculous numbers. It's just important to realize that if you're making money, don't blow it on stupid shit. Stop buying yourself designer shit. You're going to have time to buy yourself that the rest of your life. If you're in your 20s and your 30s, grab that money, get some properties, invest it into something else, flip that money. And by the time you're 30, 40 years old, you're not going to have to worry about anything. But, you know, I see so many of my friends that go and they make a a good amount of money and they go spend $800 on a pair of shoes. Like, dude, I buy my shoes on sale, bro. I go to the Nike outlet. Like, I buy my clothes on sale. I rock clothes of my friends' companies so I could support them. I don't buy myself fancy shit, dude. You know, I bought myself a Rolex a few years ago as a milestone and as a reward to myself for something I did. And I haven't bought myself anything nice. I traded in my BMW for a Nissan. I, I, I sold my exotic oh, yeah. car rental company because I wasn't doing it for me anymore. It just, I just, for me, it's about having the best equipment, having, putting out the best content, um, being able to travel and become cultured. You're listening to the Wake Up Wealthy Podcast, the only podcast that helps you turn pro in mind, body, spirit, and business. What's going on, Wake Up Wealthy listeners? Welcome to the Wake Up Wealthy Podcast, where we show you how to max out in mind, body, spirit, and business. It's your host, Brody Kern, and today we have Mr. Alex Quinn on with us. Alex, how are you? I'm doing great, man. It's a pleasure. I've been wanting to be on this podcast for a minute, bro. It's an absolute pleasure to finally be on it, man. You've been killing it. I'm very excited to be here. Dude, I'm excited. I'm excited to have you on now. So for our, our listeners who may not know who you are, why don't you, why don't you give us your story? This is how we always take this podcast. Give us, uh, give us the background. Don't hold anything back. I'll stop you if I need to ask some questions, but uh, let's start rolling. Bro, my story is pretty much... The good old American dream, man. We come, my family and I come from humble beginnings. We're, we're from South America. We're from Colombia. Um, I'm, I was actually born here. So was my mother. But, you know, we spent a um, small amount of time when I was little out there, kind of trying to find our way, trying to figure out what we were going to do. Uh, and we, had, we eventually found our way back. Um, I grew up with a single mother um, for, you know, a great part of my childhood. And then eventually my stepfather came in the picture. We built pretty much built a family of entrepreneurs together. We all started from zero. Um, my mother working in the entertainment industry, my father working in um, construction development. And, you know, obviously me going through high school and going through everything, eventually developing into an entrepreneur, but it wasn't always like that. Um, I always wanted to be a surgeon. I wanted to be a doctor. Um <laughs> but I couldn't pursue that because my hand is actually injured because I used to, I used to get in a lot of fights when I was younger, <laughs> gotcha. but you, people would pick fights with me. People would pick up, pick on me at school and, you know, just try to mess you, with me. And I was small kid or what? Yeah, I was always a small kid and I guess insecure. And, you know, people like to pick on those things and people would just come picking fights with me, two, three guys, one guy, and I would defend myself. And in one of those fights, I ended up really hurting my hand. And I never went to physical therapy because I was a hard-headed kid. And that ended up affecting my, my plans to be a surgeon, right? So, so let me ask you this, though. Realistically, had that not happened, do you think that you'd be a surgeon right now? Dude, I, pro- I am a determined fucker. I probably would have been a surgeon. I probably would have been the best really? one. But I'll tell you something. I probably wouldn't have been as happy as I am right now. I'm, yeah, I'm actually very happy things played out the way they did. Right, right. You know, you, okay. Things play out the way they're supposed to, right? Um, I, I leave, I get out of high school. I leave college. Um, I get out of high school, enter college medical track. And this is where everything starts changing. I, I notice my hand is hurt. I'm starting to see a lot of things that I'm, I'm not liking. I'm starting to really get into marketing. You know, where are you going to school at? What's up? Where are we going to school? FIU here in South Florida. Okay. I was okay. going to FIU. So I was on the medical track. And as I was on the medical track, I actually had an operating business, which was, um, car events. We did like car meets, fast and the furious type meets. Um, at Hooters or at, you know, parking garages, parks, whatever. We would have sponsors, DuPont registry, Lamborghini, Miami. People would buy tickets. Sponsors would come. It was fantastic events. There were huge three, 400 cars, how, but I was so, making money. How did that happen though? How, I mean, okay. So like, you know, tell me the jump, right? You're like, you know, 
you're this kid, single mother in Miami. Next thing we know, you're having car rallies at Hooters, right? Like, what? How would you end up doing that? Well, I gra- well, I graduated high school, right? And high school, I was always hustling. In high school, I was selling bracelets, shirts, uh, whatever I could sell to okay. make some money, get some lunch, maybe try to take a girl out on the weekend, um, have some money because I really didn't have money for those things, and my parents were kind of struggling. Um, and, and I didn't want to go asking them for money. I always try to kind of figure things out on my own. Uh, so I was always on the move. I, I, the, the reason I got into the car thing is because my friends and I love cars, right? And one day we went to this really nice, badass car event here in Miami. And we were, we were there for a few hours and we were sitting there and my friend goes to me. He's like, I think we could do this event and we could do it better. I'm like, what do you mean, bro? There's like 400 cars here. Where the hell are we going to get 400 cars? And he's like, no, bro, I really think that if we put our minds together, we could pull it off. And I was like, all right, bet. So we took like six months and we planned our own event. We partnered up with anybody that you could think about in the automotive industry down here. Boston Wheels, Lamborghini Miami, Lamborghini Palm Beach, um, DuPont Registry. Like, bro, everybody in the automotive industry down here. And we completely blew up the event, double the size of the one that we had seen before. But we weren't making any money. We weren't making any money. We were breaking even. All the events were fantastic. People had a great time. We were breaking even because sponsors didn't want to pay too much money. Attendees didn't want to pay too much money. Doesn't leave too much room for, for other right. stuff. Merchandising, right. eh, you know? So I said, you know what? This is not something that's going to work out for me. But in doing all of this, in branding my events and exploding these events and talking to all these people, I made a name for myself. And slowly people wanted to work with me in marketing. Hey, Alex, why don't you do this? Hey, Alex, why don't you do that? And I'm at, this, at the same time, I'm in college. I'm on the medical track. I'm like, man, I'm really liking this shit. I'm moving yeah. on Instagram. I use Instagram for all the promotions. Instagram, I started all of my businesses on Instagram. Every, right. I'm sitting here today because of Instagram, right? Yep. I decided to, I, 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 one day I'm just in class and I'm like, you know what? Why am I doing this? Like, I, I don't want to be a surgeon anymore. Like, my hand is all messed up. Well, what am I going to go to school for 12 years? So then somebody tell me that I can't operate on somebody. I'm going to hate my life. Uh, I, I'm going to be miserable. At the same time, I'm having so much fun when I got out of school because I'm doing marketing work for people. And then I was like, you know what? Let me get into this. I became the marketing director um, of a, I became the marketing director of an exotic car rental company down here in Miami a few years after that, right? Through building relationships while I was so did doing, you drop out of, did you drop out of college? No. As I was going to college, I was going, I was working at Pizza Hut, what, cleaning toilets, uh, doing deliveries, whatever it is that needed to be done for me. And, um, even though I was a store manager, I, I, 18 years old, I was a store manager at Pizza Hut, but people didn't take me seriously because I was young at first. So I would schedule people to clean the bathrooms. They would leave without cleaning the bathrooms. So then my boss would come and be like, why are the bathrooms dirty? I would have to still being the manager, 18 years old, go and clean the bathrooms. Yeah. Whatever, man. And you got to do what you got to do, right? It's my job. Um, eventually, I, you know, that job taught me to really be a people person, really be able to talk to older people, relate to older people. And that really kind of really helped me once I got a little bit older and had more responsibility with bigger projects. So I continued to work on the fast food industry, continued doing my thing. And then, you know, one thing led to another. And through my connections, I started working with this company I mentioned. MPH Club, the exotic car rental company, right? Right. I became the marketing director there and we did fantastic work. The, the guys, Lee and Stoss there, the founders really helped me like propel my career forward from the marketing perspective because they trusted me. I was 18 year old kid, 19 year old kid, but they trusted me with so many things, so many big photo shoots, uh, so many liabilities that were part of the business that could have really affected them. They trusted me with it and we exploded, man. All the content we were doing was going viral. Celebrities were posting it. Celebrities were in and out of the location. And I was just inspired by it all around. But one day I was just sitting there and I'm working with the guys. And I told them, like, guys, listen, like, I love working here. I love what I'm doing with you guys. But I feel like my calling is to go out and build a massive, massive operation, like a marketing operation where I'm doing work for a bunch of people, even working with you guys. I feel like I need to do my own thing. Right. Right. We had a great relationship, still do. And they were like, Alex, do what you got to do. And that's when I literally started moving 100%. I took my savings from Pizza Hut, took my savings from Miami Subs, took my savings from the stuff I had done with them, purchased equipment, purchased computers, got myself a small office, and then started going ham on Instagram, pretty much building my company page, 
selling myself as a marketer, as a marketing agency, right. closing clients. I first so started off selling. This? What's up? What year was this? Bro, this was 20, like 2014. Okay. Interesting. This was like 2014. I start closing clients on managing their social media, take creating content, getting them press, getting them all this stuff. And I was, I was getting really good at this shit, man. I was like, man, I'm like a natural at this. And then the word of mouth started getting crazy. Word of mouth advertising for me down here was ridiculous. I went from trying to open doors by myself with a little briefcase, trying to sell advertising packages on a printout, like on a folder, right? right. To having 17 employees moving across five offices and working with global brands. This really kicked off, bro. I started doing content for this guy, content for that guy, meeting this guy, meeting that guy, connecting with this guy. And eventually my phone was just going crazy. My phone was going totally insane with shit going on to the point where we were doing projects with Adidas, Red Bull. We're talking to Nike. We're doing so many things that I'm like, Jesus, how did we even get here? Wow. But it got to a point where I was in my office all day long, the whole yeah. day, trying to meet deadlines, Tell, arguing with people to for them to do their work and I wouldn't leave my office and I felt like my creativity was like stuck. I was frustrated all day, worried about money, worried about deadlines. My, the advertisers I was working with were really ungrateful. They didn't like anything ever. They, 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 they expected a humongous return on the smallest investments and I'm like, man, let me just take this knowledge that I have and let me build my own brands. Let me do my own thing because I'm tired of arguing with people. So I took my top employees, made them partners, Started about three to four different brands at the same time, mm -hmm. took a risk, fired all of my clients. I went from getting a ton of money coming into my bank account every single month to zero to me saying, all right, I'm gonna, I need to figure this shit out, like, but I'm not happy. Bro, I was making $100,000 a year consulting for a company that was paying me to go probably once or twice a week, $100,000 a year. And on top of that, my business was growing massively. And I was yep. unhappy. It, no matter how much money I was making, I hated that shit, bro. I couldn't do it anymore. I was like, you know what? That's it. Even if people think I'm crazy right now for switching it up when I, I, I pretty much made it, I don't care. I'm going to do it all over again. I started an electronics business. I, I, I started getting involved in, in apparel. I started getting involved in projects having to do with film, Netflix, all that stuff. I started building on my personal brand. And bro, it is the best decision I could have ever made. If anybody ever doubts any decision that, that you're making, but you're 100% sure of it, fuck it. Listen to fuck people, it, dude. take constructive criticism, but if you're sure of what you're doing, fuck it. Cause bro, I left what is a dream to most people and I threw it away. And I said, let me start all over again in a way that's gonna fulfill me. And I did it kind of like you, bro. You said, look, I'm doing well, I'm making a lot of money, but this is not doing it for me. And it was yeah, dude, I mean, I, I walked away from, okay. So my, I walked away from my call center business, which was, I mean, a couple hundred grand a year, 50% of my income at that time. And I said, you know what, I'm out. I, I said, I'm washing my hands clean and I'm out because I wanted to be, I wanted to make money and be fulfilled, right? Like I didn't want to wake up. I, I committed that day to not doing anything that I didn't want to do. And that's how I am now. I don't do shit that I don't want to do. No, you shouldn't. Because I'm positioned. Because I'm positioned that way. Like, don't get me wrong. I still, there's, that's an exaggeration, but like there's micro task within my projects that I want to be doing that I don't want to do, obviously, right? But I don't have to do anything that I don't want to do these days. And dude, that's just an incredible, you know that you are fucking on point. And like, I love hearing a story like that because I know someone's on point when they'll walk away from money for their purpose. Yeah. I mean, bro, honestly, like, so, so like, like I grew up very similar to, to kind of like the situation you were mentioning. There was a lot of things that maybe you didn't have that you wanted and that you felt would fulfill you like the watches, the cars. So look, bro, I was, I was a 20 year old kid rocking a Rolex, driving Aventador stuff. I was driving Aventador's, Bentley's, Ferraris to college because of the yeah. business. They weren't mine. They were not mine. I was driving, I was flying in private jets at 19 years old. And I thought that that's what I wanted to do. I thought that's what was going to make me happy or make me cool on social media and get me followers and get me girls and whatever reasons I had. But that wasn't it. Yeah, it wasn't. And I figured it out quick. I'm glad I did because some people figure out what I figured out when they're like 40. Dude, isn't that nuts? Isn't that yeah. like, like for me, it's like, I just like, you know, I spend a lot of time around AA, like Alcoholics Anonymous. And yeah, I'm just so grateful that I was bad enough to get sober at 21. Most people get sober at 50 after they've destroyed their whole life, you know? 
Yeah, man, dude, we're, we have, and, and honestly, if, if, if somebody's listening to this and they're 50 right now, don't feel like you suck. You still have a chance of changing your whole life around because most people don't become wealthy until their forties or fifties. Honestly, right. Realistic. Totally. You have to bust your ass. Those, those overnight stories is not for everyone. You know? Yeah, and, and we're and just in a di- we're we're in a different time right now, and like all these young guys that we see, you know, you see a young guy right now pop a hundred thousand dollar month on some Shopify, like, dude, I don't know, I don't know if the market's gonna flush those dudes out or not. Like, it's just gonna be really interesting to watch, you know, for guys yeah, like I that. Mean, but I know that guys like us who have real businesses, like, will make. Yeah, I mean, the the guys that to the guys that are doing that and are killing on our Shopify, which I have a lot of friends that are doing ridiculous numbers. It's just important to realize that. If you're making money, don't blow it on stupid shit. Stop buying yourself designer shit. You're going to have time to buy yourself that the rest of your life. If you're in your 20s and your 30s, grab that money, get some properties, invest it into something else, flip that money. And by the time you're 30, 40 years old, you're not going to have to worry about anything. But, you know, I see so many of my friends that go and they make a, a good amount of money and they go spend $800 on a pair of shoes. Like, dude, I buy my shoes on sale, bro. I go to the Nike outlet. Like I buy my clothes on sale. I rock clothes of my friend's company so I could support them. I don't buy myself fancy shit, dude. You know, I bought myself a Rolex a few years ago as a milestone and as a reward to myself for something I did. And I haven't bought myself anything nice. I traded in my BMW for a Nissan. I, I, I sold my exotic oh, yeah. car rental company because it wasn't doing it for me anymore. It just, I just, for me, it's about having the best equipment, having, putting out the best content, um, being able to travel and become cultured. Um, no, th- bro, like, like y- some people are so uncultured that it's ridiculous, man. Some people think yeah. that all of South America is Mexico <laughs> and then they expect, and then they expect for people to respect them or take them seriously. There is right. dozens of countries down there. Some people still think, <laughs> some people still think that Africa is a country. Right, dude. I mean, like if you, sh- if you came to, if you came to Missouri, you'd be like, whoa. Dude, there's so much to learn out there, so much to travel. Stop going to the, to the bar or, or the club and dropping two, $3,000 on the table to impress people who don't give a shit about you. Take that money and go travel. Take that money, become part of something like Wake Up Wealthy. Take that money and go to a Dream Masterminds. Invest in yourself. Stop being fucking stupid, all right? Like, yes. who are you impressing with that designer shit? Those shoes, you're going to wear them for a few months and then they're shit and they're in the trash. Those $800 could have multiplied for you tenfold if you just invested in yourself and you stop trying to floss for people who are only around you just maybe because you have followers or maybe because you're cool uh, on social media or maybe because you're seen around the right people at the end of the day when those people actually grow up and realize that none of that shit matters you're going to be stuck with nothing you're going to be stuck trying to impress nobody just impress yourself with the things that you could do for yourself to get yourself to where you want to be and that's what really matters at the end of the day that's great, dude. That's great. I, I love, I love that, you know? So t- I mean, l- let's take this time to kind of transition into what you're really focusing on now. You know, what brands are you building? Where's your focus at? What's the day to day look like for Alex Quinn? My day to day, man, it's, I gotta say it's pretty exhausting. Sometimes I want to flip the switch because before I was behind the scenes, right? So I did, I did all the marketing and nobody knew it was me. Nobody knew it was Alex doing it, but now it's, I'm doing the marketing for multiple companies. And I'm a, I have a show, I have a podcast. I'm like, to an extent, I'm a public figure. And tell us, the, tell us about the show and the podcast. Okay, so the podcast is called Grind and Hustle. And the podcast is pretty much self-development, entrepreneurship, hustle, um, showing people that you could do whatever you want to do as long as you're a badass and you believe in yourself. And we, we tell those stories through firsthand experiences, with people like you, people like people that, that I've interviewed, giving them real tips, real tools, without charging them, without doing this or that, you know, just straight up listen to it. You know, if you're on your way home from work or vice versa, listen to some pointers with people that are actually in the industry and who have actually made it before you go and spend money on somebody's program who may have just been making it up or copying somebody else's shit, right? That that's my thing. Maybe down the road I'll do release things like that. I'm not knocking anybody's hustle, but I'm trying to provide that value first before I get to the next step right? Totally. So I have the podcast running right now. We have our show called Hustle Inspires Hustle, which is pretty much traveling the world, connecting with people with inspiring stories, entrepreneurs, influencers, uh, and just helping people out. You know, in doing so, we've been able to build a foundation. And that foundation, we're going to build aqueducts for people with no access to clean water in South America. Um, right. And that, that comes from our clothing company, Palmeramia, the palm tree. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, 
Some people think it's a firefly. Some people think it's a railroad crossing signal. I didn't found the company. Um, I just recently got involved. Okay. Um, the company started in 2015, became massively popular in the Spanish culture. It is to date the biggest streetwear company in Spanish culture with over 3.5 billion impressions on social media. It's wow. doing extremely well. Right now, I'm leading the marketing charge for that. I just recently got involved with the Billionaires Club fully to run their marketing. I've been working with them since I'm 18 years old. Now I'm fully running the marketing. Um, so I have a lot of exciting projects going on. I have a drop shipping business um, where we do electronics. Um, so I have, I, have my, I have my hand in a lot of things, but it's things that I really like and things that I've learned throughout the years. And I know how to do every single thing for any of my businesses. I know how to edit on Premiere. I know how to use Lightroom. I know how to use Photoshop. I know how to use After Effects. I now know how to do podcasts. You know, I'm pretty sure my first few ones are a little bit shitty, but now I do it myself. Um, and, and I've just been like a go-getter, dude. Like I've been offered shows on TV on major networks since I'm 18 years old and they've offered me bullshit deals and I turned them all down. And I said, you know what? Let me do it myself. Let me do it myself. Let me do my own show. I'll fund the show. I was, Where can people I was going to do the podcast. Show? What's up? Where can people see that show? People are going to be able to look right now. I'm dropping the show was initially supposed to be broadcasted, but I didn't want to do that because people are no longer watching TV, you know? Right. So right now the, the, the concentration on my show is just going to be straight YouTube. At first, I wanted, it, I wanted it to make it something a little bit bigger, but honestly, bro, I don't have the time and the costs are extremely, extremely high. And I have other projects going on in the film industry. I have two projects going on in film and one in anime. Okay. Interesting. So, so those are projects that take two, three years that I'm investing money for that I'm not going to see for another two, three years, you know, right. $1 million, $1.5 million, 60,000 here, 100,000 there. Money that I know I'm not going to see for years, but money I know I'm going to see back eventually because the, the world of content is crazy right now. So, you know, those things are things that I'm putting my full concentration into right now. And the whole social media thing and my personal brand thing, it's, it's been something that's kind of like developed this year and really been pushed specifically ever since I started working with my manager, Michelle, that she's been able to get me like a lot of endorsements, a lot of cool stuff. Like she's right. been able to connect me to a lot of people and we've made a really good team when it comes to that. But for me, as far as expanding on the show, I'm going to keep it on digital, man. Digital is what drives all, all the things that I'm doing right now. And I already have large format projects that I'm working on. And more than anything, I don't want to stress myself out. I'm having a lot of fun, bro. I'm yeah. talking to people like you, connecting with people like you. You know, you never know that there may be potential for us to do business or do right. things on another end. And it's honestly what makes me happy, bro. I'm a content creator. I, I'm a public speaker at heart. And I, I just like doing this stuff. So for me, man, I'm just having fun with it. People don't want to see it just look up hustle inspires hustle on youtube or you could just google me alex quinn that's alex quinn with one end not two ends you'll find all of my stuff it's very easy to connect with me and find me online yeah dude that's great that's great you know and so what are the next you know how do you anticipate the next you know 12 to 24 months are going to go right like what do you really want to get done dude what i really want what i really want to do over the next 12 to 24 months is i want to become the most savvy executive producer I can be because my, my ultimate goal is to executive produce large format franchise films, right? At right. the moment, I'm executive producing three projects, but I'm in my beginning stages, man. I, I, I predicted that I would be executive producing by the age of 35. I'm 25, so I'm right. 10 years ahead of my initial plans. But my, my main goal right now is to become the best executive producer I can be so I could bring these films to people's screens because I love it. I love film. I love entertainment. I want, like, I want for you, for people to tune into Netflix and see three, four, five of my projects on the trending feed. That's what That's I want. Great, dude. So let's talk about film. So I, I have a love for film, um, movies, TV shows in particular, uh, film has just always been a great outlet for me just to disconnect. Um, it's something that my wife and I connect on a lot too. We just love really high quality TV. How'd you get in love with film? Right? How did that happen? I mean, I it, I guess it it all comes from when you're a kid, man. I mean, when when I was a little kid, my mom would buy me every Disney movie cassette known to mankind, right? right? And I would just watch movies, man. Lion King, Toy, uh, um, Toy Story, uh, and then as I got older, Bad Boys, and um, then I started getting into shows. 
And, and it was just, I, I was just fascinated by how people could tell stories and people could keep somebody in front of a screen entertained with something that's made up. Right. Something that somebody's sitting there writing and putting together. Like, for example, bro, Game of Thrones has a cast, like, like a production team of like 1,000 people. That's so 1,000 nice. people working in, in sync as a machine to bring entertainment to the world, to influence culture. Bro, Disney influenced so many people our age in so many ways that we don't even know yep. with their films. They shaped our, our childhood. They shaped our culture. Like they, they, they have a strong message. And that's what I want to do. I, through my films, I want to have a positive message. I want to entertain, but I want it to be fulfilling and make sense. Somebody that I really look up to is Leonardo DiCaprio. The dude does incredible films and he does everything he can to help out with the causes that he believes in when it comes to environmental changes, when it comes to animals, like that's the type of flow I want to be on. I want to be making badass films. I know I'm going to be making a shitload of money that I'm probably not even going to need. I just want to help people out. I want to be on the Leo route. I want to, I want to be on the Elon Musk route, you know, uh, renewable energy, helping people out, uh, building aqueducts through, through my foundation and our clothing company, Palmera Mia in places of the world who don't have aqueducts. You know, you know, it only costs bro $10,000 to build an aqueduct for a community. And what, what kind of result does that really provide? I know nothing other than obviously clean water, but like how much, like what happens? Like, you know, I don't know anything about an aqueduct. Okay. So a lot, a lot of these, a lot of these pretty much communities all over the place, all over the world, uh, people have to walk 15, 20 miles a day to get clean water. Okay. And then they have to walk back with the heavy jugs of water on their back and do it all over again. What do we do? We just get up and go to the sink. Right. Right. So Foundations, companies like, like Blue Missions have developed a technology to where they could build an aqueduct from a mountain, bring it to the community, directly to the community where they could access the water from a well or from any other type of pretty much pre-existing uh, hardware that they have, right? Removing then, that 15-minute walk. Or, or even when they do walk those 15 minutes to get water, the water is a little bit dirty. Right. And then they get sick. And then people pass away. And then children get sick. Yeah. And then when somebody tells you $10,000 to bring clean water to hundreds, if not thousands of people, that's not anything, dude. It's no brainer. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that everybody in our circle of entrepreneurship, if we put our heads together, we could put 10 grand together real quick and then we could fly somewhere crazy as fuck in the world and change hundreds of people's lives. That'll be more fulfilling than a fucking Ferrari, you totally, know, dude. but it, it's, it's just wanting to do it. So what am I doing right now with what I'm doing? I'm just building a platform to be able to push the things that I believe in. You know, yeah. I don't have a, you know, I have a clear plan on what I want, but as far as my personal brand and my personal image, I'm just having fun with it, getting more known, connecting with cool people, people that potentially want to help me. I already have a bunch of entrepreneurs that are helping me with the aqueducts, donating right. or using their resources or posting or sharing stuff for me, which is great. Because, you know, sometimes people don't have the money to give right away, but they have the resources and they have the network and that's all that really matters. So that's what I'm using my network for, bro. Grind and hustle, hustle inspires hustle. All of my businesses is pretty much, man, just, I want to, I want to see people growing with me and I want to, I want to stop seeing fucked up shit happen, man. I know I'm not going to change the world by myself, but you know, maybe just a little bit of positivity from my end can make a difference in some people's lives. And, you know, maybe that'll create a trickle effect and snowball effect. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. So, hey, before we wrap up here, I want you to tell everyone where they can find you. Guys, if you want to connect with me, you guys could find me on alexquinn.com. Quinn with one N. Or you could find me on social media, under any social media platform, Mr. Alex Quinn. That's M-R, Alex Quinn, again, with one N. And just hit me up. Connect with me. Send me a DM. I, I'm very active. I hit everybody back. Um, sign up for my newsletter if you want. I send a newsletter every Monday morning. You guys can sign up at hustleinspireshustle.com. You get interviews, podcasts, tips, tricks, wallpapers, anything you could possibly think of to keep you engaged and informed of the industry when ha having to do with entrepreneurship, mental health, anything that you could think about, you guys could find me on social media. Just connect with me and well, stay in touch. Excellent, dude. Excellent. Well, we really appreciate you coming on and we will, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, brother.